Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News, broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel prepares for the construction of a pier on the coastline of the Gaza Strip as the United States leads an effort to facilitate a maritime corridor for the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rejects an assertion by President Joe Biden who claimed that the Israeli leader is pursuing a bad policy for the state of Israel. Jerusalem pledges to maintain freedom of worship during the month of Ramadan. The Israel Defense Forces continue to fight against Islamist Hamas, eliminating additional terrorists and destroying additional terror infrastructure belonging to the internationally designated terror organization. בשעה זו כוחות צה"ל ממשיכים להילחם, הורגים עוד מחבלים ומשמידים עוד תשתיות טרור של חמאס. חמישה חודשים מאז שיצאנו למלחמה. מאז שיצאנו למלחמה ב-7 באוקטובר. מזה כחמישה חודשים שלוחמי צה"ל נלחמים בעזה בנחישות ובאומץ לב ומביאים להישגים גבוהים בדרך לפירוק החמאס. החזרת הביטחון לגבולות והשבת החטופים. חלק שילמו על כך בחייהם, לא היינו יכולים להמשיך ולהילחם ללא ההקרבה שלהם. ההקרבה של המשפחות השכולות ופצועי צה"ל בגוף ובנפש. אנחנו מצדיעים לכם הערב. As the Muslim observed, the month of Ramadan marked its first day of fasting today. Admiral Hagali further highlighted that inter-agency efforts are being intensified to ensure security and safety for all. במהלך היום הרמטכ"ל וראש השב"כ אישרו תוכניות להמשך בפיקוד הדרום. לצד המשך המלחמה, אנחנו מחזקים את ההיערכות הביטחונית לחודש הרמדאן. יחד עם שירות הביטחון הכללי ומשטרת ישראל, אנחנו נערכים לכל התרחישים המבצעיים ומגבירים את התיאום הבין-ארגוני בכל הזירות. לצד הרצון לאפשר חופש פולחן תחת מגבלות ביטחוניות ובטיחותיות. While limited security arrangements are implemented, an Israeli government spokesperson highlighted that the announced constraints are no different than those that were implemented in previous years. This Ramadan, let the reasonable public prevail. Don't lend a hand to extremists. So today we reiterate that this year and every year, Israel will strongly safeguard the freedom of religion for all faiths at all sites in Israel. especially the Temple Mount and Al-Aqsa. Alongside efforts to ensure freedom of worship for all faiths throughout Israel, which Jerusalem aspires to uphold irrespective of the war versus Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Israel is working to implement, in close collaboration with the United States, a maritime corridor that would also enable an increasing flow of humanitarian goods into the Gaza Strip. אני נמצא כעת בסיור מול חופי עזה, יחד עם מפקד חיל הים ומתאם הפעולות בשטחים. באנו על מנת להסתכל מקרוב על האופן שבו מתחילים להכין את עבודות התשתית לפתיחת המסדרון הימי. התהליך הזה מיועד על מנת להביא סיוע ישירות לתושבים ובכך להמשיך במיטוט שלטון החמאס בעזה. אנחנו נביא דרך נתיב ימי שמתואם עם ארצות הברית בצד הביטחוני וגם ההומניטרי, בסיוע של האמירטים בצד האזרחי, ואנחנו תחת בידוק מתאים בקפריסין נגיע עם סחורות שיבואו על ידי ארגונים בינלאומיים בסיוע אמריקאי. הדבר הזה הוא מהלך שצה"ל, בהתאם להנחיות שנתתי לו, החל בו כבר לפני שלושה חודשים. התוכנית הוצגה כבר לפני חודשיים. As part of the IDF's preparations that began approximately two months ago, the IDF's 162nd Brigade has already conquered the coastline where the pier is expected to be erected. צריך לזכור שבחוף נמצאים כוחות של אוגדה 162 מוכנים, ת"פ פיקוד הדרום, לעשות את כל מה שמוטל עליהם בנושא הזה, לקלוט את הדברים, לאבטח את אזור הנחיתה. ולאפשר את הסיוע ההומניטרי 
שיגיע למי שצריך ולא למי שלא צריך. Meanwhile in Washington, Pentagon Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder further elaborated on the U.S. military preparations for the peers' establishment per U.S. President Joe Biden's instructions. Simply put, they'll establish a temporary offshore maritime pier that allows for shipping vessels to transfer cargo to smaller vessels to transport and offload cargo to a temporary causeway for the delivery of humanitarian aid to Gaza. Now we're in the process of identifying, sourcing, and in some cases preparing forces to deploy, but I can confirm that elements of the 7th Transportation Brigade Expeditionary out of Joint Base Langley-Eustis in Virginia have been tasked to support. Importantly, there will be no U.S. forces on the ground in Gaza. Um, we anticipate that it'll take uh, over a thousand uh, U.S. forces uh, to participate uh, in, in uh, building this capability. Uh, as far as time frame, as I mentioned, several weeks, uh, likely up to 60 days in order to deploy the forces uh, and uh, construct the, uh, the causeway and the, and the pier. Meanwhile, following an apology made by U.S. President Joe Biden in an exclusive interview to MSNBC, as part of which he voiced regret over the deaths of Palestinians, whom, according to an Al Jazeera report, were struck by airdropped American aid, Pentagon Press Secretary Ryder unequivocally refuted the Qatari report as false. Press reports that U.S. airdrops resulted in civilian casualties on the ground are false as we've confirmed that all of our aid bundles landed safely on the ground. It is important to know that President Biden, in his exclusive interview with MSNBC with Jonathan Capehart, also seized the opportunity to voice his disdain for Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, alleging that the Israeli leader is pursuing a policy that is bad for the state of Israel. He has a right to defend Israel a right to continue to pursue Hamas, but he must, he must, he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken. He's hurting, in my view, he's hurting Israel more than helping Israel by making the rest of the world, it's contrary to what Israel stands for. And I think it's a big mistake. So I want to see a ceasefire. Well, citing the death toll published by the U.S. designated terror group Hamas, while stopping short from noting that over 13,000 of those killed are, in fact, terror operatives, President Biden was asked further about whether an Israeli offensive into the Gazan border town of Rafah would constitute a so-called red line. It is a red line, but I'm never going to leave Israel. The defense of Israel is still critical, so there's no red line. I'm going to cut off all weapons so they don't have the Iron Dome to protect them. They don't have. But there's red lines that if it crosses and they can, you cannot have 30,000 more Palestinians dead as a consequence of going after. There's other ways to deal, to get to, to deal with the, with, with the trauma caused by Hamas. In response to President Biden's remarks, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, in an interview to Politico, asserted that the policy which it pursues in the fight against terror receives broad support among the Israeli public. I don't know exactly what the president meant, but if he meant by that that I'm pursuing private policies against the majority, the wish of the majority of Israelis, and that this is uh, hurting the interests of Israel, then he's wrong on both counts. Number one, these are not my private policies only. They're policies supported by the overwhelming majority of the Israelis. They support uh, the action that we're taking to destroy the remaining uh, terrorist battalions of Hamas. They say that once we uh, destroy the Hamas, the last thing we should do is put in Gaza, in charge of Gaza, the Palestinian Authority that uh, educates its children towards terrorism and pays for terrorism. And they also support my position that says that we should resoundingly reject the attempt to ram down our throats a Palestinian state. Uh, that is uh, uh, something that they agree on, uh, and it's something that I think is also for the interests of Israel, because uh, the majority of Israelis understand that if we don't do this, what we'll have is a repetition of the October 7th massacre, which is bad for Israel, bad for the Palestinians, bad for the uh, future of peace in the Middle East. So the, the attempt to say that my policies are my Private policies that are not supported by most Israelis is false. The vast majority are united as never before, and they understand what's good for Israel. 
Well, Israel's defense establishment fights on with the aim of guaranteeing that the atrocities committed by Hamas against the citizens of southern Israel will never reoccur. It is working under broadly reported U.S. constraints to reassert security along the country's northern front, from which dozens of rockets are being fired daily by the Iranian proxy Hezbollah. Bilvanon. אנחנו ממשיכים לפעול במטרה להביא למצב ביטחוני בו התושבים יכולים לחזור לבתיהם. האתגר ברור ואנחנו נחושים. אנחנו נמשיך לפגוע במערכים הצבאיים של חיזבאללה, במפקדות, במחסנים לאמצעי לחימה, בעמדות, בכל תשתית שעלולה לשמש אותו ובכל מחבל חיזבאללה שיסכן את מדינת ישראל. It's important to highlight that there are currently over 100,000 Israeli civilians who have been displaced seeking refuge in central regions of the Jewish state. And while Jerusalem pledged that the reality that existed before Hezbollah launched its daily hostilities against Israel, namely on October 8th, U.S. brokered talks have yet to bear any prospects for a negotiated solution. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. Separately, I'd like to encourage you, as ever, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavuot Mevorach. And God willing, we'll see you during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.